such a significant number of participants has made it already into the call. Um, right up, can you please uh, turn off your microphone? Um, it's, uh, we have the pleasure to organize uh, this webinar in co collaboration with our supporting member, MA MBG Corporate Services Group, Mayopatra Group. Thank you for that. Obviously, uh, the topic uh, um, came at the right time. And as I see the number of participants increasing. On the 1st of April, Uman will also introduce a value added tax. We are very curious to learn from MBG today what this means for us, uh, having operations on the ground in Muscat and in the Sultanate of Oman in general. What are the consequences not only for exporting goods to Oman, but also for delivering services, which typically is the most compli complicated aspect of the whole VAT topic. Uh, I'm not a VAT expert. The colleagues from MBG are. I know that they have a quite comprehensive presentation. Therefore, I keep quiet now and would like to immediately hand over to Björn Köhler. Björn, please. Thank you very much, Oliver. Uh, very good morning, everyone. Um, thank you uh, for tuning in into this webinar on uh, Oman VET in cooperation with the AHK, the German Emirati Joint Council for Industry and Commerce in the UAE. Before we start, a few administrative things. Um, all participant uh, microphones are on mute. And we ask um, um, you uh, we ask you to use the, the chat function um, of um, uh, Webex to submit your query. We will uh, try to answer all your queries um, at the end of the session. We have 10 to 15 minutes uh, for the Q&A session, and um, these uh, this session uh, will be recorded. Um, first of all, thank of you. Uh, thank, uh, thank, thank, thanks a lot uh, to the HK for organizing the webinar on this um, hot topic uh, and to speak to your member firms um, uh, today. Many thanks also uh, to the CEO, Oliver Oehms, uh, for, for joining us uh, today uh, and to, to, to be here uh, for, for us and for your member firms. We have uh, seen a lot of interest in OmanVet over the last couple of months and as part of our active uh, supporting membership with the HK, uh, we would like to give you the latest updates uh, on VAT which will be implemented in next month and the actions uh, to be taken from the businesses. With me today is um, our director and leader of MBG's indirect tax practice, Mr. Vibhav Mata and um, Mr. Vipin Ahuja, who will be joining us for the Q&A session at the end. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Let me quickly guide you through the uh, today's agenda. Next slide, please. Um, I'll give you a short introduction about MBG corporate services. Uh, we will take over and speak about VAT, and then we conclude the session with the Q&A for 10, 15 minutes. So wherever you are at the moment, either in Oman, in UAE, in Germany, or in India, uh, I wish you an interesting session, and please don't hesitate to ask your questions in the Q&A box. Thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, my name is Björn Köhler and I'm working as a general manager for the German business desk at MBG here in Dubai. Uh, and it's my pleasure to be your host today together with the AHK. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll just give you a brief overview about MBG for those who are not familiar with us. Established in 2002, we are now have 16 offices across six locations. All those uh, high growth markets, we serve European, Middle East, uh, and Asian markets with our dedicated teams of German, Japanese, Chinese, and Singaporean nationals who bridge the gap um, between, yeah, who bridge the uh, cultural, linguistic, and technical barriers. With over 3,000 clients globally, we are very proud to have more than 100 Fortune uh, 500 clients with us. We have over 500 staff across the globe, all fully utilized and employed by MBG. Next slide, please. We have a very wide range of services that enables us to support organizations wherever they are in their journey. We have the traditional audit and assurance practice uh, with the in-country value practice. 
we do a lot of work on risk advisory and restructuring. Our colleagues from the international uh, tax service line support clients with their cross-border tax matters, either uh, in terms of indirect or direct tax. Uh, here in UAE, we are the registered tax agents with the Federal Tax Authority, and we support many companies to comply with the uh, UAE VAT law. Next slide, please. We have a dedicated M&A service line, which is working closely with our in-house legal department uh, to advise on M&A transactions. We are working continuously with organizations in their strategy and transformation requirements. Our fully fledged technology department help clients with their digital transformation. With this being said, I would like to hand over to Vibaf, who would start the presentation on Oman VAT. Thank you. Thank you, Bjorn, uh, for such good introduction. And I would like to thank EHK and MBG for arranging this seminar, this webinar. So first of all, uh, good morning to everyone. And thank you all for joining this webinar on Oman VAT law. So we are going to discuss in detail the provisions of Oman VAT law and the applicability of Oman, uh, the applicability of VAT law uh, in the Sultanate of Oman. So before uh, going into the provisions of law, uh, let me give you an understanding of the fundamentals of VAT. So what is uh, value added tax? So what is value added tax? Value added tax is an indirect tax, right? So first of all, let me tell you what is the difference between a direct tax and an indirect tax. So direct tax, the concept of direct tax is the tax by the person who actually bears and pays the tax. However, on the other side, the indirect tax is the tax is paid by the supplier, but it is borne by the consumer. So this is an indirect tax. So VAT is an indirect tax, right? Coming to the basic fundamentals of VAT, VAT uh, is an indirect tax, is a consumption-based tax and collected at every stage of a supply chain. So every, nearly all the goods which are going to be uh, bought and sold in the Sultanate of Oman, so that the VAT will be applicable on such supplies, right? Except the goods and services which are specifically exempt from the levy of VAT, which will be discussed in detail while we are discussing the exempted supplies. So what about the procurements? If you are paying tax on your output side, so what about the procurements? So procurements, when you are purchasing, you are getting the input VAT, right? So input VAT is a tax which is paid on the procurements and the output VAT is a tax paid on your output supplies. So input VAT is can be set off against your total tax liability on your output supplies. So input VAT will be considered as a deduction while calculating your net tax liability to be deposited to the tax authority in Oman. Coming to the next concept, the exports are generally zero rated. So uh, the companies in Oman have to decide, have to think that if they are zero rated, however, zero rated doesn't mean exempt. So zero rated means the supplies are taxable. However, they are being zero rated by the government of Oman. So this, in this case, the tax will be zero, but the input tax credit will be eligible. So what is the difference between the exempted supply and the zero rated supply? A very simple and a basic difference between these two is that on the exempted supplies, it is a zero tax supply on which you will not be able to claim the input tax credit because that is the out of scope supplies and not taxable. Whereas zero rated supplies are taxable supplies However, they are being zero rated by the government and the input VAT will be eligible, right? So why uh, VAT is coming in Oman? Why, what is the reason of introduction in Oman? So basically the revenue of the government is uh, to contribute, uh, the government can get the additional revenue from the taxes, which can contribute towards the provision of high quality public services, such as roads, hospitals, public schools, parks, and police services. So the dependency on the oil and other resources will be uh, curbed and the resources on taxes will be added 
to the government of Sultanate of Oman. So basically, uh, and there is one more reason that there is an agreement of GCC, which is uh, for the implementation of, which is signed by the Oman, uh, Sultanate of Oman, and therefore they will be going, uh, uh, the VAT is going to be applicable on the Sultanate of Oman. So what will be the rate of tax? The rate of tax is going to be the 5%. As you can see, that in other countries, the rate of tax is higher. However, in Oman and United Arab Emirates, the tax rate is 5%, which is lower than the other countries. So what is the taxation system in Oman? So every company is required to know what would be the taxation system because uh, once you, know, you will get any error in your return, or you get any issues uh, related to the tax authority, or you get any assessment or anything in the tax. So you have to approach your tax authorities and you must be knowing that what is the hierarchy of your tax authority. So tax authority constitutes uh, first the Sultanate of Oman Ministry of Finance and the hierarchy goes down to Sultanate of Oman Tax Authority. In the tax authority, there are director generals and executive directors. After this, there is a legal uh, Ministry of Legal Affairs in which we have Tax Dispute Resolution Committee and we have competent court to deal with the issues came along with the tax authorities. Coming on to the current status of VAT. Coming to the current status of VAT uh, regulations in Oman. So Sultanate of Oman published VAT law with 13 section and 106 article. A very detailed law which is being summarized in the uh, upcoming slides. And this has been, uh, you know, published by the decree 121 2020 in the official budget on 18th October 2020. So normally the law is going to be enforced within 180 days of publication. So it will be 16th April 2021, which will be the trigger date for application of date. Sultanate of Oman will issue the executive regulations. So basically this is a basic law which is being introduced, which is being published. However, there are certain explanations, clarifications and detailing in the rules and laws, which will be in the executive regulations, which will be announced by the tax authority later on. So, and tax authority in the mean, they have uh, introduced certain information sheets. They have given certain general basic details, some helping FAQs to the taxpayers to get registered into Oman with the Oman tax authority and to make necessary arrangement uh, and to uh, proceed for the implementation of VAT in the company. So what is the mechanism and registration process? What is the mechanism of VAT? As I have already told that it is quite simple. Uh, the manufacturer is going to produce the goods. They will make the first supply. And let's say, for example, in our uh, current slide, the manufacturers has sold the supply for OMR 1000 and they have charged VAT at the rate of 5%. So the total value of the supply is 1050 OMR. And the business who has purchased this supply has done some value addition. So the tax will be levied in, on the value addition in the VAT scenario. So they have sold this goods at OMR 10,000 to the final consumer. So the VAT they have charged at the rate 5% will be five, uh, 500 OMR on 10,000. So what is the output VAT? That is 5% of 10,000, which is coming out to 500. And what is the input VAT is 5% of 1,000, that is 50 OMR. So the net VAT of 450 is required to be deposited to the tax authority by the business who is receiving input tax supply from the manufacturer. So this is the mechanism and flow of transaction in VAT if the transaction is normally taxable and the VAT is chargeable at the rate of 5% on the normal supplies. So coming on to the registration part. So there is a mandatory registration for the taxpayers who is having a turnover threshold above 38,500 OMR. So they are mandatorily required to get registered under the with the Oman VAT authorities. So how this value is to be arrived, how the value is to be calculated, 
the value of threshold will be calculated from the month in which the law is published. The law is published in the month of October. So you have to see both sides preceding 11 months and following 11 months. So you have to make a total of 12 months, including October, either preceding or following. So one may ask the question how they can calculate the months of following 11 months. So they have to estimate the turnover, which is going to be there in the next 11 months from October 2020. And if that turnover, considering the past turnover, 11 months plus October or the October plus falling 11 months turnover, if that exceeds 38,500 over mark, so you are required to get directly registered with the VAT authorities, one VAT authorities. So accordingly, what will be the voluntary registration limits? Voluntary uh, registration limits will be OMR 19,250 equivalent to USD 50,000. So any person, any taxable person who is doing activity, who is doing turnover above 19,250 OMR can have a voluntary registration. So in other countries, uh, usually the government allows voluntary registration at any level of sales. In case of Oman, they have given a specific uh, threshold but we have to check the uh, regulations which will come in the future that what are the exact conditions of getting registration or uh, under Oman VAT. Why I am saying this? Because there is a reason when you are uh, dealing in Oman, you are getting any supply as an input tax. So if you do not have an output tax, it will add it to your cost. So in that case, some of the taxpayers would look out for voluntary registration to utilize the VAT input to you know, keep their prices unchanged. So it is important to look this voluntary registration as well. Coming on to the non-resident registration, non-resident person is a person who is not having any physical presence in Oman, who is not having any uh, physical presence or fixed establishment in Oman, but they are doing any activity in Oman. They are making sales, making supplies, so they can register in Oman without any conditions of turnover, and they can be represented through a tax representative, which will be appointed in Oman to represent non-registered, non-registered, non-resident registration. Right. And there is one more concept, which is termed as tax group. So two or more entities or two or more taxable person can uh, come together as a group. So they can have a group registration. So what are the benefits of having joint responsibility? You will be having one common responsible person having dealing with the whole group. And the transaction between two entities in a group will not be taxable. So they, they are not going to be taxable while dealing with each other. So as a group, they have to deal. When they are dealing out of the group, the transaction will be taxable under Oman VAT law. Right? So what are the timelines of registration? So this is very important slide. One should know what are the timelines for registration, which is being announced by the Oman VAT authority. So according to Oman VAT Authority, uh, uh, the person who is doing taxable supplies more than 1 million OMR is required to get registered by, uh, you know, 1st February 2021. And the effective date of registration will be 16th April 2021. Going forward, the person who are falling between 5 lakh OMR to uh, 1 million OMR, they are required to get registered from 1st April to 31st May. And their effective date will be 1st July 20. 21. Coming to the next uh, option, 250,000 OMR to 5 lakh OMR, 1st July 2021 to 31st August 2021. And the effective date of registration will be 1st October 2021. And last but not the least, the persons who are falling into the last category 30, 38,500 to 250,000 OMR, 1st December 2021 to 28th February 2022. And the effective date of registration will be 1st April 2022. So the registration, the gestation period of registration is quite uh, long. So the persons can decide and make the registration. But the planning is required to be done right now. The implementation is required to be done. So in case of voluntary registration, the person can start registration from 1st February 2021. And the effective date of registration will be given into the certificate of registration issued by the Oman VAT tax authorities. So now coming on to the key concepts under the Oman VAT law. This is very important to know the key concept because otherwise it will be difficult to 
understand the law to you know make interpret the law to understand the law and debate so what are the key concepts which are required to be known there is one very important concept to be known as responsible person this concept is introduced in oman which says that every taxable person has to appoint a responsible person so who is responsible responsible person and what he will be doing so responsible person is a person who will be representing the taxpayer the taxable person in front of the oman tax authorities right so the tax authorities will ask will will ask the details if required from the responsible person of the company so so responsible person is to be appointed by the taxable person if it is not appointed by the taxable person then it is to be appointed by the chairman of tax authority so the businesses have to look forward they have to get registered they have to appoint taxable person as well so taxable person will be representing before tax authority there is one more important point the taxable person the responsible person cannot stay outside the sultanate for more than 90 days without the approval of tax authority so you have to take a approval from the tax authority if the responsible person leaves sultanate of oman for more than 90 days so coming on to the next important uh, concept that is supply so why we are discussing supply supply is important to be known because the vat will be applied on the supply supply of goods and services will be taxable in oman so it is important to know what what all kinds of supply will be there so what is the supply the supply will be normal supply you are supplying goods and services in the sultanate of oman so it is going to be taxable other supplies in that case we have exempt supplies in case of exempt supplies it will not be taxable but the itc will not be deductible in these supplies coming on to the next concept deem supply in case of deem supply this is very important so deem supplies are the supplies which are normally not taxable but in case the business is doing these transactions it is going it is specifically come into the taxable ambit by the law so these are not normally taxable but law specifically brings these transaction into the into the tax net. so the tax will be applicable on deem supplies intra gcc supplies so any supplies between gcc states and oman that will be taxable as a intra gcc supplies coming on to the next slide so what are the taxable supplies covered under the definition of supply the normal supply which is taxable deemed supply also the import of goods if the person taxable person is importing goods from outside the sultanate of oman and the goods are coming into sultanate of oman so this will be termed as import of goods and they are liable for vat in oman similarly if the goods and services are supplied by a non resident maybe the person who is present in other gcc countries which are required to be chargeable under rcm so there will be a reverse charge mechanism which will be charged on the imports and the goods supplied by a non resident so what is rcm reverse charge mechanism it will be discussed in the upcoming slides in detail so this in this case you have to charge tax on imports so what is the supply of good and what is the supply of service what is the difference between these two so assigning the possession of goods and transfer of ownership immediately or at a later stage subsequent to the date of agreement upon receipt of consideration so when you are transferring the possession of the goods and you are transferring on a subsequent date or immediately it will be considered as a transfer of supply of goods in fact if you are granting a rights of ownership if you are granting a rights of ownership to the uh, to the customer then it is also going to be the supply of goods coming on to the very important concept if you are doing any uh, if you are compulsory cessation of ownership if you are doing any compulsory cessation of ownership that will also come under the supply of goods so if there is any you know non complete loss if there is any cessation of activity for which any consideration is received that would also term as a supply of goods or supply of services so anything which is not a supply of good would be supply of services so all the terms are very wide in oman vat law so each and every supply has to be particularly checked 
and uh, think of whether it is exempted or not. If it is not exempted, not zero rated, then it is going to be taxable as per Oman VAT law. So what are deemed supplies? When you are saying that it is, it, it seems that these supplies are not taxable. So how it comes under the ambit of taxability? You see that any business is using any goods and it changes the use of goods to a non-taxable supplies. For example, you are using a laptop and you supply your laptop to your employee with, with or without consideration. So it is not a taxable supply. You are giving the laptop to your employee itself. But in the law, this transaction is coming under deemed supplies. Even if, even if it is without the consideration, it will be considered as taxable. And you have to compute the value as per the regulations and you have to pay a VAT in Sultanate of Umar. Secondly, if you supply without consideration, unless it is related to activity, you are giving commercial gifts and samples. In that case also, if you are giving FOC sales or samples or gifts, it will coming under the ambit of VAT taxability. And you have to compute the values as per regulations, which will be discussed in the upcoming slides, and you have to pay tax in Oman. Similarly, if you are doing any disposal of permanent disposal of goods to uh, any other branch, so this is between your branch within the same entity, but it will be considered as a deemed supplies and it will be chargeable to VAT. Retaining goods after cessation of activity, if anyone you know stops the business or it's uh, the business is going to be seized and they have retained certain goods or certain assets, so that will be also considered as deemed supplies. So in, on that supplies, a taxpayer is required to pay the VAT. Use of goods from taxable person assets with or without consideration. So again, any person who is using the goods of uh, the taxable person is considered as a deemed service and the VAT will be applicable on such transactions as well. So what is an exempt supply? As I already told, the exempt supplies means the supplies on which no VAT is required to be charged. So VAT will not be charged on certain exempt supplies. However, there is a condition that input VAT on the procurements for providing such uh, for such uh, output services, output uh, supplies. So that input VAT is not deductible, right? So what are that services which are, you know, out of the scope or out of the ambit of one VAT law? The financial services, healthcare services, education services, resale of residential properties, local passenger transport and rent of properties for residential purposes. So we have to see the executive regulations how these, uh, uh, you know, to what extent these services are not taxable because financial services are very wide term. What all, what and all kind of financial services are exempt and what and all are not exempt has to be seen according to the regulations. Again, there is a point that resale of residential property. So what about the first sale of the residential property? Uh, so in this case, if uh, it has to be clarified by the executive regulations, whether the first sale of residential properties is going to be taxable or not. What and all covered under healthcare and education services also, also to be seen in the upcoming executive regulations. So up exempt supplies in relation to the imports. So when you are doing imports, as I already told, the imports are liable for reverse charge mechanism. So the person who is not present in Oman is supplying goods in Oman. So the person who is the recipient will be considered as that the goods are supplied by himself. So the person who is receiving the goods from a person who is not in Sultanate of Oman will be considered as imports and he will be paying the tax under reverse charge mechanism considering that he himself has made the supply to the taxable person. So in case of imports, there are certain cases where the tax will not be chargeable and that imports will be non-taxable. So what are these? Goods imported are exempted or zero rated. If these goods are directly exempted or zero rated, then the VAT will not be charged under RC. Imported goods are in favor of diplomatic and consular bodies and the imported to armed forces and security forces. So these kind of uh, goods will not be uh, taxable when they are imported. If there are any personal effects or household items supplied for charities, 
or if the goods are returned goods. Let's say, for example, one entity sent the goods for repair outside Oman and they have received back that goods after some repair without any value addition. So the goods will not be taxable in Oman. These are returned goods. So coming on to the zero rated supplies, zero rated supplies, as I already explained, that these are taxable supplies, however, they are specifically zero rated by the government. So the input VAT on these supplies are eligible. So one may ask uh, that how the input tax credit can be deductible because your output supplies are zero rated. So you cannot utilize the input tax credit that we will discuss in detail, but uh, you can take the refund from the Oman VAT authorities of the tax, which is paid on the input uh, utilized for zero rated supplies. So normally export of goods would, will be zero rated. Supply means for transport designated for commercial purposes. Food items specified by the decision. So there are 90 list of 90 more than 90 products which has been specified by the Oman VAT authorities which are out of uh, taxability and zero rated, rated because of their normal and general use. Re-export of goods which have been temporarily imported. Supply of rescue planes, rescue assistance in boats, crude oil and oil derivatives. So there are certain investments in precious metals as well. Yes, the export of services will also be exempt. If you are doing any services which are exported outside the Oman, will be exempt from, will be zero rated uh, under Oman VAT law. So what and all types of non-taxable supplies? Supply in the case of transfer of business activity. If you are transferring whole of your business activity, will not be considered as taxable supplies, but it is subject to the uh, executive regulations. We have to see what and all cover under the supply of transfer of business activity. Temporary transfer of goods according to the temporary entry. As I have already explained, if there is a temporary, tra temporary transfer of goods, will not be taxable and will be considered as a non-taxable supplier. Supplies within the tax group. As I already explained that if two or more entities make a tax group and the supplies between the tax group will not be considered as taxable, they will be non-taxable supplies. Supplies between insurance, company and insured for claiming the settlement. So this is a procedure for claiming settlement only, cannot be termed as supply. So it is specifically uh, uh, given outside the scope of taxable supplies. Transfer is a part of another taxable supply. So if any supply which is a part of taxability of another supply uh, cannot be taxed twice. So it is specifically excluded from the taxable supplies. So coming on to the concept of agents and reverse charge supplies. Agents in case of agents, if they are supplying on behalf of principal, so the uh, supply will be considered as a supply of principal because agent is behaving on behalf of principal. So we will not be considered as the supplier directly. However, in case the agent is directly operating on its own name, then the supply will be considered to be made by the agent himself. Right? Coming on to the concept of reverse charge mechanism. So giving what is reverse charge mechanism? Let me give you a small brief. Normally, if you pay the tax as a supplier, so you are supplying goods and services, you are paying the tax. So you are a supplier and paying tax. However, in case of reverse charge mechanism, you are a recipient. You are receiving the goods from outside the Sultanate of Oman, but you are required to pay tax on reverse charge mechanism. So in this case, you are paying the you are paying tax on the reverse mechanism. So the customer who is receiving the goods from the outside of Sultanate is paying the tax. So this is the reason it is called reverse charge mechanism. So reverse charge mechanism in Oman VAT law can be of two types, where the goods are supplied from outside the uh, Oman, and the goods which are supplied by other GCC states, and they are imported into Sultanate of Oman, and in that case also the RCM applies, right? So in general, when we see uh, the RCM, the tax payable on RCM will be governed by two mechanisms. One, the VAT can be paid at the time of uh, importation. If you are importing the goods into Oman, you can directly pay the VAT to the, uh, to the government. Or there is another mechanism which is being followed in UAE that the, there is a book entry is being passed and 
the oman vat registration and custom registrations are linked with each other and these are adjusted while making the net output supplies so there is a mere book entry in the books not actual outflow however in psa there is a actual outflow and the vat is required to be paid in cash by importing into oman so coming on to the chargeability when the vat is going to be applied if you are making a supply then when the vat is going to apply let's say for example a taxpayer is making supply so it should have to see three major components place of supply time of supply and value of supply to decide the tax component which is required to be paid and deposited to the oman vat tax authorities so what is the place of supply if the transaction is not done in oman it is done outside oman how can this transaction be taxed in oman so one has to check that the place of supply of transaction should be in oman time of supply is very important so when the vat is going to be triggered if the vat law is not yet implemented nobody is required to pay the vat so vat once applied and we have to check the time of supply when the supply is completed when the goods are delivered when the payment is received then only you can decide the chargeability of pa value of supply you have to calculate the actual value of consideration which you are charging so what law says are you charging anything in time are you charging any taxes are you charging any fees so that all that and all will be considered as a part of our consideration so we have to check what is the actual consideration not only you are agreeing that you will be paying some amount it can include some other amounts in the value of consideration as well understanding the concept in detail what will be the place of supply if you are supplying goods the place of supply is this uh, is the place where the location of the goods are there when you are supplying the goods so without dispatch or transportation where the goods are made available to the customer and if there is a transportation then where the transportation starts in case of services there are two points which are to be considered if you are making supply of services to the customer who is a business to b2c customer then it will apply the place of supply will be the place of supplier and in case you are making supplies to b2b customers then it will be the place of supply of the place of supply will be the place of recipient so coming on these are the general rules of place of supply what are the specific rules in these cases the place of supply will be the actual performance of uh, supply or where the transportation begins like for example if there is a supply of transportation services of goods and passengers so where the transportation begins will be the place of supply similarly in case of real estate in case of real estate the place of supply where where the real estate is situated no matter what kind of services are being done if it is you are staying in a hotel or there is a construction activity going or there is any engineering activities going anything any supply which is related to the uh, real estate is going is the place of supply where the real estate, real estate is situated and where the services are actually being performed rental services of transportation where the means of transport have been given on disposal to the customer will be the place of supply supply of wired and wireless telecommunication services if there is a wired and wireless telecommunication services then where the these services are actually being provided where these services where these wireless communications where this uh, uh, telecommunications are installed there will be the actual use and benefit and that will be the place of supply in other cases where there is a restaurant supplies food beverages cultural artistic sports educational and recreational services or there is a services uh, being of transportation in supply to a non taxable customer then the place of actual performance will be the place of supply supply of services related to the goods transported means any services which are being supplied as a installation services like if you are supplying a goods and you are giving installation services also the installation where the installation is being done so that will be the place of actual performance so that will be the place of supply so what will be the time of supply in the normal scenario the earliest of date of supply date of invoice or date of receipt of payment whichever is coming earlier so if you received a payment earlier then that will be considered as a date of supply 
if you have if your supply is complete then that will be the trigger date of your supply and if you have already issued an invoice of the supply then that will also, that can also be considered as a date of supply we have to see the earliest of this events okay, from these three events any event which come earlier will trigger the date of supply similarly in case of imports where the import is done the date of import if there is any first port entry in gcc that will be considered as the date of import and in case there is a release of suspension under common custom law then that will be the date of the uh, importation and the trigger date of supply in case of imports in other cases uh, that uh, like in case of prepaid calling cards and vouchers we have to get uh, executive regulations to decide what will be the date of uh, uh, what will be the date of trigger date of time of supply and in case of the continuous supplies we have to check the uh, date of invoice or we have to see the continuous supply agreement the trigger date of invoice will be considered as the date of supply coming on to the valuation of supply so this is very important concept how did you value your uh, uh, value your consideration which you are getting from your customer so if this is a normal case and there is a unrelated party so the value of consideration will be normal value of consideration which you are charging and the expenses which have been done directly related to the value of consideration like for example if you are providing any goods and you are also incurring transportation charges and you are charging it back from the customer so the transportation cost will also be included into the value of consideration any fee or any tax due which is also to be recovered or uh, recovered from the customer and the deductions will be any discount which is given to the customer any subsidies and grants which are linked with the supply or any amount which is which will be decided as per regulation so your consideration will include all your normal consideration plus expenses which you are incurring in relation to that and the tax and fees due what about the related party related party means any person any entity who is having influence over the decisions of the other party so any group company any related party who is transaction who is doing transaction in between with each other so they can influence the price so the law prescribes a specific mechanism to decide the consideration in case of related party so in case of related party it has to be uh, if the value of supply is lesser than the market value then the taxable value will be equal to market value as calculated as per the regulations which will be informed later on so you have to gather the information of market value while calculating the value with a with a related party so it is very important to check this aspect while dealing with your uh, group companies with your related parties now what is deem i have already told the deem supplies so in case of deem supplies also you have to check three things value of purchase cost or the market value as per regulation so you have to uh, calculate the deemed value because you are supplying goods within the organization so it is a deemed supplies so how you will calculate the value of deemed supplies it can be the value of purchase or cost or market value whichever is higher in case of import of goods you have to take the value as per common custom law the value which is decided as per common custom law and you add any taxes any charges any freight or insurance paid at the time of importation and the custom duty so what and all will be the cost of imports will be these three components you have to add to them in your in case you are doing temporary exportation so you have to refer the common custom law for the value addition whatever is the value addition while doing this exportation will be considered as value or supply so now what will be the calculation of output and input vat so we have seen the value of supply if you calculate the value of supply then 5% on the taxable value will be considered as vat and that is required to be deposited with the oman vat authorities and net vat liability will be the output vat liability minus input vat liability on the procurement one very important point then anybody who is depositing the vat liability uh, not on the due date later by the due date then 1% of additional value of additional tax is required to be charged on the delayed payment of taxes so this is a important point if you are getting registered with the oman vat authorities and the tax payment is delayed then 
uh, of additional taxes required to be paid to the command VAT authorities. Coming on to the deduction of input tax credit, normally input tax credit is eligible on all the uh, on all the inputs on procurements like normal supplies, import of goods, any other RCM, zero rated supplies if you are doing exports and you are getting any input, so that can be eligible. And some cases where there is an out of scope supplies, the regulations may inform the uh, the goods and services where the input VAT will be eligible. So what about the input VAT lifespan? So input VAT you are already available. For example, you are providing any other services where you are not fully utilizing the input VAT. The input VAT can be carried forward for three years and it can be kept in the books and utilized in the later period. Coming on to the adjustment of input tax credit, if you are doing any cancellation of supply, if you are reducing any consideration, or you are changing the use of any asset to the capital asset, then your ITC is required to be reduced and adjusted. IT, it is very important that ITC is not deductible on certain prohibited imports or supplies, which will be, uh, you know, informed by the executive regulations that how, which are those uh, supplies on which the input tax credit is not deductible. So no ITC adjustment in case of loss, damages, commercial sample and gifts. If there is sample gifts are there and losses are there in the transit or there is a commercial sample and gifts are there, then input ITC is required to be reversed and adjusted. So going to the administrative procedures, what are the administrative procedures required to be followed by the taxable persons who are going to register uh, with the Oman VAT authorities? So every taxable person is required to issue a tax invoice. So tax invoice will contain the details of supply, value of supply, the rate of VAT charge, and the amount of total value of the invoice. So mandatory tax invoice is required to be raised there can be a conditions specified by the executive regulations to amend the invoice. So any change in the supply can be amended later on, but we have to see the regulations, what will be the time period of amendment and what on what in all the conditions to amend the basic supply. If the invoice is required to be stated in foreign currency, then the taxpayer are required to convert this foreign currency into by the central bank rate of Oman. And one more important point that all the accounting records are to be kept for at least 15 years in case of real estate and in any other cases for 10 years. So one has to see that their IT systems are upgraded to you know, store their records and they have to keep their records for that much period which has been prescribed by Oman VAT law. So the next compliance will be the returns. Returns are required to be filed within 30 days from the tax period. So within 30 days, you have to pay the tax. You have to file the returns. So this is a very important compliance which a taxpayer is required to do. However, any uh, revision and uh, in case of amendments or change in return. So the taxpayer can change the return within three years and within 30 days after the discovery of care. Within the span time of three years, the taxpayer can revise the return within 30 days after uh, getting the after getting notice of any error or discovery of any. Error. However, this period can be extended by the Oman tax VAT authorities by up to five years. So Oman VAT authorities observing any error in the return can make change up to five years. Coming on to the next concept, which is very important refunds. Any person who is having input tax credit greater than their output VAT liability. In that case, their input VAT will be a cost. So what they can do, they can go to the department, they can uh, go to the tax authorities and can get the refund of excess tax paid on their input tax. Likewise, any tax paid by the specific diplomatic counselor bodies can be taken as refunds by the non-resident businesses, by the tourists, and any other person specified by the tax authorities can also avail the refunds on any tax which is paid to the tax authorities in excess.
So coming on to the tax disputes, tax disputes in case of any uh, error and omission in the return, one can go to the tax authorities for correction. Tax authorities by themselves can take the measures to correct the returns or the tax authorities can make the assessment as well. If they are making any assessment, uh, that assessment is, you know, uh, acceptable by the taxpayer, then that is okay. However, if the taxpayer is not satisfied with the assessment and aggrieved by the decision of tax authority and go to the higher authority, which is which will be the chairman of tax authorities and the objection can be filed before the chairman. In case where the tax authorities is also not satisfied by the decision of chairman, they can go, they can go be, uh, before the uh, committee of tax authority and file their grievance. In case the taxpayer is not satisfied by the decision of committee, it can further go and file an appeal to the statutory court. So these are the tax disputes resolution mechanism provided by the Oman tax authorities. So very important concept tax disputes and penalties. So in case the taxpayers uh, is making any deliberate failure uh, on certain activities prescribed by the Oman VAT authorities, the, there can be an imprisonment of two months up to one year, and there can be a fine of 1000 OMR, which can range up to 10,000 OMR in cases where there is a deliberate failure to nominate a responsible person. So as per law, taxable person is required to appoint a responsible person. If they do not appoint, there is a penalty on the same. Failure to notify the absence of responsible person. If a, if a taxable person fails to notify the absence, in that case, it will be a non-compliance. Failure to notify the change in data. If there is any change in the address of the company, any addition in branch, anything which is, uh, which is there is a change, you have to intimate to the tax authorities within 30 days. Failure to issue tax invoice. If you are liable to get registered and liable to issue invoice, and you do not do that. In that case, there will be a penalty. Failure to maintain or submit the reports to tax authorities. So you have to maintain the mandatory reports and submit to the tax authorities if required. Failure to submit and correct the refund application if there is a wrong refund application and the amount uh, uh, which is written in the application is not correct, then there is a repercussion. And failure to appear before the tax authority. If you receive any notice from the tax authority and do not appear before the tax authority will also be uh, penalized. And this imprisonment goes up to three years and the penalty goes up to 20,000 OMR in the following cases. Deliberate failure to register with tax authorities. If you are deliberately not registering, your uh, the limit crosses, uh, the threshold crosses the minimum limits, but you are deliberately not registering with the tax authorities. Deliberate failure to file the correct data and bad returns. So you are not filing correct data and bad returns. Deliberate failure to correct the information regarding the tax views. You are showing uh, not correct sales or not correct supplies and submission of falsified documents. Anything which is not correct or falsified and submitted to the department and concealment of any record from the tax authority. So all these uh, all these issues and all these mistakes can land to a huge penalties and uh, would require to be taken care by all the taxpayers very seriously. So coming on to the transitional provisions, what are the transitional provisions? As I already informed uh, that anybody who is supplying any goods and services before 16th April are not going to be uh, um, a VAT applicable, right? Uh, so the VAT is not applied on any supplies before 16th April. However, the VAT is going to uh, will be applied after 16th April, right? So what and all happening under the transitional provisions, how you will transition to the new VAT law. For example, there is some stock which is uh, already kept in the factory or go down or warehouse of the company, and they are supplying these goods after the implication of VAT, after the implementation of VAT. So that goods will be chargeable to VAT. So in any case where the supply is made after the effective date of VAT, so all that supplies are going to be taxable. Even if the procurements are made before the implementation of VAT. So one has to take care of the transitional provisions. Like for example, if there is any uh, continuous supply going, any continuous contract going 
uh, and the and the supply of continuous contract falls beyond the VAT implementation. So one has to make the provision of GST or of VAT liability. So the VAT will be applicable on supplies made after, even in case of continuous supplies, which are made after the implementation date. So what are the actions which are required to be made taken by the businesses? So very important, one must consider that now you are going to be paying the VAT liability. So it is going to impact your working capital. If you are getting input tax credit and you are utilizing that, then VAT liability can be uh, optimized. So one has to think that whether they are supplying, supplying any exempt services also, if they are supplying any exempt services or exempt goods, in that case, your VAT input will be blocked. So all the VAT liability will be a cost for your, uh, all the VAT input on the performance will become a cost to the company. So the company is required to have a planning on the input optimization. And they have to check the uh, impact on their working capital. They have to do the working capital management. Accordingly, they have to revisit the contracts with their customers and vendors. So any contract with the vendor who should have a tax uh, clause, if it does not have a tax clause, then we should revise the uh, contracts and it should contain the tax clause in itself. Accordingly, with the customers, you have to revise your uh, price list. Uh, basically, your prices will go up with the VAT amount. You have to optimize your prices. You have to check uh, the demand and supply ratio. And you have to check whether any inputs are going to be uh, blocked in your case. If the inputs are going to be blocked, then your prices are going to be changed in any case. You have to check internally that uh, the VAT systems is updated in your uh, information technology part. So it has to be your ERP should be integrated with the VAT. You have to raise new invoices containing VAT details. You have to uh, charge taxes on the date of supply, time of supply, and the value of consideration as per law. So your system should be capable of calculating the consideration. If it does not calculate the right consideration, the VAT will be wrongly paid and the panel consequences will come. So you have to uh, integrate your ERP system as well. You have to modify the contracts. You have to modify the terms with the uh, customers and vendors. You have to send customer communications and vendor communications. Whether your vendor is updated on the VAT or not, if your vendor is not charging, he is liable for VAT. So again, there will be a chances of overlapping or, uh, you know, uh, losing of VAT or there is a, a deduction which is not going to be available to the uh, taxable person. So we have to uh, keep a look on that also. One has to decide the voluntary registration as well because you know there is a uh, there is a trigger date which has been given for uh, registration. So one person who is not yet registered will be receiving input goods uh, on with VAT. So they are not going to uh, charge the output VAT. So the input VAT will become the cost. So one has to think whether it is profitable to take uh, voluntary registration if the, that cost does not impact the business, then in that case, they are not required to take the voluntary registration. But if that cost is higher, then the voluntary registration will also be required. Right? So all these aspects are to be taken care. So you have to train your employees as well. So employees should be know what is what and all is coming in the VAT. So they should be trained. And some uh, training should also be imparted regarding maintenance of invoices and records related to VAT. You should also plan your uh, gift policies. You should also plan your policies regarding freebies because now there is a concept of deemed taxability on that. So you have to think about that also. So these are all things which you have to take into care. Apart from that, very important thing, you have to take care of your compliances. You have to file returns. You have to take uh, measures for tax management. If that is avoided, then the panel consequences will be there. So you have to, should hire a professional to get the services to get these compliances done to avoid any consequences in the future. Sorry, Vipap, uh, for interrupting you. Um, we have uh, exceeded a little bit. Uh, the time was uh, 11 to 12. Uh, I would like to ask uh, you a couple of questions we have received during the uh, webinar. Maybe uh, before we finish the session, uh, you can answer these. 
Um, there's one question uh, raised by one participant is uh, what will be the treatment of stocks kept before the date of VAT implementation? Right. I have uh, just explained the transitional provisions and this is a very good query which you have asking that the goods which are kept because these goods are procured without the input VAT. So the person, the taxpayer has to pay VAT if they uh, supply these goods after the implementation of VAT. So obviously the, they do not have any input tax credit. They have to charge VAT on the goods supplied after implementation date, right? Okay, thanks. Another question is, uh, is it required to charge VAT on advance receive? Absolutely. This is a very important question. Many uh, people face the problem in this because, you know, the date of supply is when you receive the uh, amount, when you receive any payment or there is any date of uh, issue of invoice, or you have completed your supply. So your amount of supply has triggered the date of supply. So in that case, you have to charge VAT on amount received as advance. Okay. Then the another question is, uh, is VAT applicable on director sitting fee? Right. So this is a very important question. Uh, director sitting fee is going to be taxable under Oman VAT scenario. Because this is the director services are the services are the independent services provided by the directors. So in that case, these services are also going to be taxable and the VAT is required to be charged on director sitting fee. However, we have to see the distinction between the full time directors or the directors who are only charging sitting fee. That will be explained by the executive regulations which are coming in the future. Okay, one more question. If a certain business falls under 0% VAT, does VAT reporting remain required? Yes, if they are falling under zero rated also, uh, in that case, they are receiving input tax credit on their procurements. So on all their procurements, that input tax credit will become the cost if they do not register and get the, get the refunds of that input VAT. So that will become their cost. So they have to, uh, you know, they have to get the impact analysis. What will be the cost of input and what will be the cost of, uh, you know, uh, getting the refund back and the amount of refund is quite huge, then it will be profitable to get registered. Thank you, Baba. Uh, last question before we close the session is, is it mandatory to show the TRN number, the tax registration number on your invoice? Absolutely. This is very important that, you know, when you are issuing the invoice, you have to give all the mandatory details on the invoice. So you are giving the details of uh, customer, detail of recipient, de details of input, detail of, uh, sorry, detail of output tax liability, detail of uh, supply. So you have to mention the uh, tax registration number on the invoice itself. Okay. Thank you very much for the clarification. Uh, I think we are okay for today. Uh, if we have a couple of uh, questions more. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, I just want to. Know. One, two minutes. Yes. Then I'll ask the next question. So we can. Yeah, we can try to answer some more queries, but uh, we can take those queries on email. Yeah, there is one question uh, from one of the participants. Is there a clarification how medical equipment will be classified by the classif classification of the country of origin or will it be classified in Oman? No, if you are supplying the medical equipments from Oman, so this will be uh, considered as supply of uh, medical equipments from Oman. However, some of the services are related to the medical supplies are exempted. So we have to see uh, the executive regulations, whether these kind of supplies, which you are asking are going to be taxable or not. Okay, thank you. Next question, when can we expect the executive regulations? Uh, basically, everyone is asking this query. Uh, <laughs> also very relevant because executive regulations are expected from uh, the tax authorities. Uh, in fact, we were expecting in the month of February itself, but uh, we expect it to come uh, in one or two weeks shortly. Okay.
Daniela, do you have any more questions we can ask? Wilbur? Uh, you can ask one, two questions, one, two queries. Okay. There are so many questions. There's one more question. Is VET applicable uh, on all expenses like professional fees, rentals, et cetera? Right. This is a, a good question. A person, a taxable person, a businessman is required to ask these kinds of queries because, you know, all the expenses which are related to business. So I am talking about the activity. So who is doing business activity? Any expenses which are incurred in relation to that business activity will be deductible and eligible to the taxpayer. So any professional expenses, any expenses related to the commercial rents, any expenses related to the other rents which are paid by the business in during their activity, during their business, will be definitely eligible to them. However, there are certain expenses which are you know personally utilized or utilized uh, for the employee's consumption that are to be checked in future, whether they are eligible or not with the executive regulations. So there we have received one interesting request. Uh, one of our participants is requesting to have another session in the mid of March. Uh, I'm sure Daniela and Oliver, we can plan uh, another one. Uh, maybe by mid of March, there will be the, the executive regulation have been released by then. And we have a little bit more clarity about uh, VAT in Oman. Right, absolutely. Okay. Any other query? No, I think we will re reply to these queries uh, after the session. Is, uh, we right. have uh, the number is uh, quite huge, then we can also answer these queries over email. Okay. No, it's uh, it's 10, 10 after 12, uh, 10, 10 past 12. So uh, I think everybody wants to have lunch now uh, when you are in, uh, in GCC. Uh, thank you very much uh, from my side. Also, uh, thank you very much, Vibhav, uh, the AHK, Daniela, for organizing the webinar. For the interesting exchange, uh, you have seen the law is quite young, uh, but still uh, complex. We can spend the whole day to to speak about um, Oman vet. Um, but thank you very much for joining, for tuning in. Uh, we wish you a happy weekend, and hope to see you uh, very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, B. John. Thank you. Thanks a lot, each and everyone, for sparing your valuable time for Oman VAT Insights. I would like to thank each and everyone. It's my pleasure spending time spending my time with you all. Thanks a lot. Thank you.